Good evening once again, wonderful viewers. Thank you for joining us once again for this broadcast, Arise and Shine broadcast. And I believe that uh, the Lord has also prepared for us a wonderful, wonderful uh, a message that is going to encourage us, especially as men, uh, because as I said yesterday, we will continue with the teaching that I started yesterday about uh, leaving a legacy uh, for our generation. Yesterday I majored more on men and today we continue with that series but today it's not only for men but it's for everybody. If you are a mother, if you are a son, if you are a man, uh, even if you are a, a young man who is out there, maybe you see that I'm not married yet, I believe this message is for you. So give me the next 30 minutes and I, I believe that uh, by the sharing of the scriptures we are going to be strengthened and also to be enlightened, especially when it comes to what is happening with men. The title of our message today is called, it's a very simple message, but the title it says, Let's pray for the boy child. Let's pray for the, uh, uh, for the boy child. And we're going to look why we should pray for the boy child. Yesterday, as we, uh, we had the Father's Day, I believe maybe not all the fathers even who received the card. It's not that maybe your wife or the, the people around you forgot, uh, forgot about you, but it's very, most, in most cases it's very uh, uh, likely and it happens so oftenly that men are forgotten. Um, it's so, in so many cases it's, uh, it's taken uh, likely that, okay, all oh, men will understand. When you go to the book uh, to, uh, to the stores, if you are looking to buy a card, during Mother's Day, the cards are everywhere. There are more cards uh, uh, for birthdays. There are more cards, uh, different versions of cards during Mother uh, for Mother's Day. But uh, when you're looking for Father's Day card, uh, if you have never tried ever tried to go and buy a card for Father's Day, you realize actually maybe you find maybe few. In every store they don't want to take risk and buy many and nobody's buying them and sometimes maybe we think that it is normal or it's okay but I want us to break that myth and understand that also fathers are important men are important as mothers are I'm not against mothers I was brought up by wonderful mothers they are wonderful women uh, who, who, who are there when I was growing up and they still continue to play a big part in my life there was my mom there was my grandmother uh, who played a very very big, big part in my upbringing of uh, good uh, memories of, of, of teachers wonderful women teachers who took care of me when I was growing up and I respect them up to today and I have a great respect for women not only those who brought me up but even women out there I have seen women who have fought battles fight uh, to the nail for their children uh, and we, we have testimonies of, of great women who have stood even when they were despised when they were ostracized when they were rejected and yet they stood so I have nothing to do with women and I uh, against women but today I want us to focus and understand also that men also fight themselves, fighting battles that most people don't understand. And I want us to see that um, it is it is the, the battle against the boy child did not begin yesterday. It is a battle that has been raging for many years, thousands of years. But we are going to look at that because we instead of reinventing the wheel, is just looking at the past, how things panned, especially in the Bible. The, the battle for the boy child, what was happening and why it was happening like that. And then we can be able to bring it to, to now and be able to, uh, to prepare ourselves and train ourselves in a way that will be able to help the boy child. Uh, I, I was listening to another story, uh, I was reading a story uh, for, from an American, uh, 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 he's a person who used to, uh, used to work in a prison. And he gave this uh, very uh, distressing uh, story. He said that he was one of the, the, the chaplain in, the, in, that in, in a prison in America. And he said that during Mother's Day, the cards were oversubscribed. And uh, they had to bring another uh, different, uh, an extra van to ship, uh, to be able to take the cards uh, that would be sent out for the, uh, during Mother's Day. 
But he, he, uh, he said that during Father's Day, just maybe a few cards that were sent from prison to fathers. And that's distressing. Maybe that answers so many questions, uh, so many answers there, uh, so, uh, so many questions. You find that maybe most men uh, subscribe more to their, to their mothers as opposed to their fathers. Most men are bitter with their fathers as opposed to uh, uh, what, when, when compared to their mothers. But I want us to break the mate and be able to understand that uh, it is not in the will of God that the, 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 the divide between the sons or between the boy child and the father or the, between the son and the father. It is in the will of God that they should be together, they should be one. But the divide can be, uh, be brought, packaged in different ways. And we're going to look at that today. And when you understand where the battle is, we'll be able to defend the boy child. We'll be able to pray for the boy child. We'll be able to honor and respect the men in our lives. Because if we don't understand this, we'll always say, paint everybody with the same brush. We'll be thinking that men are there, uh, just there to be seen and not to be heard. You'll be thinking that maybe all men are failure. You'll be thinking that it is okay for men to struggle or to suffer the way they suffer. But when you understand where the battle is, then you'll be able to redefine the approach. We'll be able to re redefine uh, the rules of engagement. We'll be able to see men not as tools to be used or tools that need to be, uh, 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 to be ostracized, but also understand that we are a team. Boys, men, women, girls, that we are supposed to be a team to win the battle of life. And I'm saying, as I, uh, as I started, I say that this battle did not begin now. And we're going to read the scriptures here in the book of, uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 18. Exodus chapter 1, verse 18, it says, let's start from verse, no, let's start from verse 12. This is the children of Israel when they were, uh, they were in Egypt. Uh, after Joseph died, we know what happened is that uh, the, the story changed and they, the, 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 the Egyptians began to oppress them. And this is in verse 12 of Exodus chapter 1, it says, but the more, uh, let's start from verse 1, it says, therefore they sent the tax masters, these are the Egyptians, over them to afflict them with, the, with their burdens. And they built for, uh, built for Pharaoh surprise cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with leader. They made their lives bitter with hand bondage, in mortar, in bricks, and in all manner of service in the field. All their services in which they made them serve was with legal. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name one was Shipla, and the name of the other was Pure. Pure. And he said, when you do the duties of midwife for the Hebrew women, and see them on the, on the bath stool. If it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? And the midwife said to, to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. And so it was, because the midwives feared God, because the midwife feared God, that he provided households for them. So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born, you shall cast him into the liver and every daughter you shall save alive. May the Lord bless his word. So we see here, this is in the beginning, uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, and we see uh, uh, a backdrop of what was happening in Egypt. And we see, in, in, in time, most of the time when you see Egypt mentioned in the Bible, it, it, it represents the world uh, and the kingdom of darkness. I'm not saying that the Egyptians are like that, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it helps us understand how the, 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 the 
kingdom of darkness work and understand also how, how God work. So the, 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 when you see this setup, we see how the king, the system of the world work. And the, uh, Egypt being a representation of the kingdom of, the, uh, of darkness, how it works, then we understand that the battle for the boy child did not begin this year or, or, or the last uh, uh, decade. But we see that for thousands of years, the kingdom of darkness has been after the boy child. And you see, in this case, the enemy has nothing, has no problem. He did not have a problem with women in any way or form. His battlefield or his uh, pursuit was to destroy the boy child. Because why? He knows that now when the women uh, are left, uh, he can, uh, he knows that he can mani manipulate the, 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 the girl, uh, the, the girl child. And the girl child can be married to another, uh, to, to, uh, to the person of his will, uh, or, or the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of darkness will. But when, if men are standing and men knows the will of God and they serve God, they know uh, the enemy knows that the entire family is taken care of. So we see what we see, what is happening with men today. When we see murder, when we see killing when you see frustration when you see uh, men separated from their children when you see the battle uh, where the battlefield is we should look beyond the perpetrators but know the, the one behind what is happening most of the time we have dealt with the fruit and we have not dealt with the root when we understand the battle that we are fighting right now the, the boy child battle when we know that the agenda is not from the women, when we know that there's a, an, a, another force that is behind this, then we'll be able to change our mode of operato. We'll, our, rule, our, battle, our rules of engagement will change. We will know that now we do not fight against flesh and blood, but we are fight against spiritual forces. And we'll be able to know when, even as we pray for boy child, even as we pray for uh, uh, advocacy uh, uh, on behalf of the boy child, we know that our battles is we are, we are fighting against a spiritual system that has been there for ages, and its desire is to annihilate uh, the, the, the boy child. And this did not end there in the book of uh, what we have just read in the book of Exodus. We see also in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 16 and 18, it says, Then Herod, when he saw that he, he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its district from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled, uh, th then it was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Lamar, a lamentation, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are normal. We see another great slaughter just exactly almost similar to what was happening in the book of Exodus. And we see in these two different, uh, uh, we can call it genocide. In these two genocide, the, uh, the first genocide, we know that the enemy was targeting uh, one, Moses. In the second genocide in the book of Matthew, we see the enemy was targeting one, Jesus. And we, we should come to understand here that as much as the enemy would like to destroy men or, or destroy uh, humankind, sometimes he's not very sure who he's dealing with. And so sometimes he may destroy an entire group, age group, trying to target one. And I, I, I remember I got this revelation some years back when I was praying for the, uh, for the boy child. Uh, especially in London, because of all, all the, the, the knife crime. And I, uh, I remember the Lord reminded me, to, uh, uh, read me to read these two chapters that we have just read. And he told me that every time you see this bloodshed, this, uh, uh, this killing, it is, we should look beyond the boys. We should look beyond uh, what is happening and fight, pray against the spirit behind it. Because we know within this generation, there is something, there's somebody of substance out of this generation that is killing each other. There is somebody of substance that God is going to use mightily. And you know, when you begin to see this age group that is fighting and disturbing each other, what has been happening, especially in this country, you realize there is somebody that God is going to use to change a generation. 
and, and so the enemy is somehow killing and calling, causing them to kill each other because there is a seed that God is going to use within that generation. So I want you to see that the, the, the battle for the boy child did not begin now. And I want you to understand that now we cannot only keep on praying for the same, uh, maybe for, for just for prayer for, uh, for, for, for God to, to, to give you or for God to supply. But we need to be intentional, especially if you are Christian, in our prayers we should pray for our men. In our prayer, we should pray uh, for the boy child. Uh, uh, let me use the word boy child. So, encompass every man and every boy. Because we know the more we see our men being frustrated, the more we see our men uh, 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 dying anyhow, we will continue to see that maybe it's, it's in the gene of men. It is men die early, men do this. But we, if we just join the story, if we just join uh, the, 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 what the, the, the media is telling us, if we just join the statistics and we are Christian, then we have missed the plot. And I'm going to show you some th few things that, are, uh, uh, that I'm going to, uh, uh, to give you an understanding of what is exactly happening. Because until we have a deep conversation, until we have a sober conversation and under begin to understand what is happening with the boy child, we'll keep on put, uh, playing the brain game. Praying, saying that maybe if my man did better, if my man did like this, if uh, the man in my life did like this, but maybe you have not known what they have been going through. Sometimes men we are, are mistaken, their silence is, mis uh, is mistaken for not being caring. But men are, are sometimes, they have been brought, they have been raised, the way God has wired us is to be problem solvers. And when a man cannot be able to solve a problem, it's one of the most frustrating things. And I want you to understand, uh, and I, I pray, and this is my, I give homework to every woman who is listening, if married or not married. And especially if you are not married, I would advise you, this is the best time. Study about what is a man and how does man operate. If you are married and you have never read a book about a man, how men think, how men operate, how men, how, how men do their things, then you are doing a disservice. Some of the battles that you have been fighting is because you have not taken time to understand and to study about men. If you are a mother and you are raising boys, it is a criminal offense that you have never read a book about parenthood and especially raising boys. Because you will try to raise your boy just the way maybe you are raised. Remember, we, uh, I think I was listening to another documentary and it uh, was saying that we are raising a generation that is overmothered and, 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 and a father. What do I mean by this? Most of the boys that have been raised right now, they are overmothered. What do I mean? They, they were in their mother's womb for nine months. After that, when they, 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 they were growing up in the kindergarten and preschool, most likely their teachers were women. When they went to, say, uh, to primary school, most of the teachers are women. Uh, it is now in secondary school when the narrative begins to change. And so you find that most of the boys are overmothered unless uh, and they underfathered. So it is until now women begin to study and understand raising boys, how do you raise boys? That will make a difference. I'm a father of boys. I have two boys, I'm raising two boys. But believe you me, raising boys and girls is totally, is a two different ball game. It's like raising, uh, uh, it's like a game of rugby and a game of ping pong. That's the difference. So you can imagine if you are a mother and you are raising a boy and you don't know how boys behave. And so this message is not only for men, it's for mothers, it's for women and even young women to understand how men uh, work. Coming back to our, teach, uh, 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 our preaching today, because I don't want to take so much of your time, I want us to understand some of the statistics that will make us pray more and pray for our, uh, uh, our men. Because if you know the statistics, if you know the spirit, remember what I said, if you know the spirit behind it, then it, you will change your approach. I'm not saying that you become sympathetic, I'm saying you become enlightened so that you can have a course of action and fight a good fight of faith. Let's look at some few facts. 
this fact, uh, maybe you are watching from another country, but I believe these statistics, uh, they, 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 they are across many nations now. Uh, let me give stat uh, uh, some facts, the, especially if you are for men who are in UK. It says here, one in three men in the UK have experienced suicidal thought, thought as, as a result of feeling stressed. Statistics, another thing is that two in three men in the UK say they felt stressed at some point over last year due to being overwhelmed. These are men. There are men in your life. Maybe it's your husband I'm talking about. Maybe it's your son. Maybe it's your brother. Maybe it's a friend. But this has pure and true statistics. Another thing, a fact about men is this. Only, in one, only one in four men feel able to talk to friends and family at times when they are feeling stressed. Very worrying statistics. Very worrying statistics. And you can imagine, most men don't have friends. We are starting a movement whereby we are going to, I believe even you are going to have a, 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 a wristband and it's, it's going to go to every man that says, show me your friend. Because most men don't have friends. Most men don't have friends, not like women. Women can make friendship, friends anywhere, even in a toilet. They, they can strike a, strike a conversation and ask each other, maybe, where did you buy that Brazilian wig? How did you buy, who made, you know, women are able to start a conversation uh, anywhere, even in a toilet. But men, when you go to toilet, is do our business. And if you can imagine, maybe even a man try to smile to you, uh, at you in a toilet, let me go into, not go into that. You will just brush off and move on. So men rarely make friends. But there are other worrying statistics. When it comes to healthcare, this is what says here, uh, this the are worrying uh, facts and statistics, uh, especially here in UK. About healthcare, men are more likely than women to die prematurely. And one in five men dies before the age of 65. Wow. Men have 37% higher risk of dying from cancer overall, which men are 56% more likely to develop non-gender specific cancers than women, and 67% more likely to die from them. This is health. So men are more prone to death as opposed to women. Listen to what it says here. 11,287 men died of pro prostate cancer in the year 2014, and I believe uh, the statistics continue to increase every year. One in four black men will get prostate cancer at some point in their lives. We refuse this in Jesus' name. So you see, these things come hidden as a form of a disease. But now understanding that the battle for the boy child did not just begin now, things will come hidden in form of a disease, and we'll accept it as it is okay, oh, if you're a black man, you can die of prostate cancer. I'm not saying you become careless, but we need to be also rise up. Number one, we have to eat healthily, we have to take care of our bodies, we cannot uh, avoid that. But also know that when you pray, pray against that spirit behind these things, because we now know that there's a battle that has been waging, been waged against the boy child for many years. So when you hear these statistics, we do not just cow, become cowards and become say that whatever will be, let it be. But we know that we can be able to change this narrative. We can change and win this battle against the plot of the enemy. And it is possible in Jesus' name. When it comes, uh, uh, slide number three, when it comes to suicide and, uh, suicide and mental health, in 2016, there were 4,287 male suicide in the UK accounting for 76% of all suicides. 76% of all suicide committed in 2016 in UK was committed by men. And this has not, has not improved. 2018, 2019, it has been increasing and the percentage is higher on men. This means that an average of more than 12 men a day take their own lives. 12 men take their own lives in UK. You want to tell me this is normal? It is not normal. 12% uh, to, not 12 percent, 12 men every day. There are people who commit suicide every day. And on average, 12 men take their own lives in UK. I don't know where you, you, you're watching this program from, but this is not normal. 
And we have to see the battle, where the battlefield is, where the battle is, who is waging this war, because it's not normal to lose 12 men every day through suicide. It says here, black men are 17 times more likely than white men to be diagnosed with a serious mental health illness. Can we change this narrative? Yes, number one, by what I said, being uh, obvious, we have to take care of our health, we have to seek help, we have to uh, consult the doctors, we have to have also friends, and we also have to have accountability groups where we can be able to open up. But I want us to see that it's, mental health is not a stigma, it's just like any other disease. I know we demonize everything, but we know uh, we don't need to spiritualize everything. When you are stressed, you need, uh, you know, uh, you need mechanism where you can be able to cope with the stress. And when you feel like overwhelmed, it's not a criminal offense to seek for psycholo uh, 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 psychological help or, uh, or, or a counselor who can speak to you. Hallelujah. But I want us to see that all these things are hidden. They can be hidden in form of diseases, but we can be able to pray and also be, be, uh, be intentional in our approach. And we can change the narrative of men in Jesus' name. Let's look at, I'm still looking at the statistics about men. And I said, I'm not saying this to look for sympathy, but I want to bring this awareness because it's, it's, either, you are it's either you are dad, either you are son, either you are brother, or somebody in your, in your family who is a man. And when you are well equipped and you understand what they fight every day, then we can be relevant and be able to help and start together. Listen, victim of, of, of violence, uh, another thing is about uh, most men are the victim of violence. It says men are nearly twice as likely as women to be victim of violent crime. And among children, boys are more likely than girls to be victim of violence. Over two thirds of murder victims are male. Men make up 73% of robbery victims. 98.6% of UK military death in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. They were male. Another thing about homelessness. Homelessness. Listen to what it says here. 86% of rough sleepers in England are male. 84% of the hidden homeless are male. In England, between 2000 and 2009, men were 90% of, 90 of those who died while homeless were men. From 2013 to 2017, the number of UK homeless people who died each year more than doubled, 90% of which were men. You want to tell me this is natural? This is normal? No. We have to look at the two chapters that I've read. There's a battle against the boy child. And we cannot just sit down and say, uh, it is okay. Uh, it, it has been like this. It takes one man. It takes you. It takes me. It takes two people who agree together and say, we can change this narrative. We, shall, we are not going to lose any more men. We are going to rise up and become the defenders of men. We are going to pray for men. We are going to stand with men. We are going to make friendship with men. We are going to stand with men. Listen, I know what it means to have a good friend who can stand with you. I know what it means to be in a life whereby somebody also value what you carry. I know what it means to have somebody who can also stand with you in prayer. I also know what it means for somebody to encourage you to become. And listen, we have to become a people who are focused to change the narrative. We cannot only keep on reading these statistics and say, oh, that's bad, that's weird, that's, uh, that, that, that's, that's discouraging. These statistics are for, to make us even more angry, not with the system, but with the devil that we, we decide that this will not be our portion anymore, that we can stand up and say that I'll be taking time in prayer and fasting. I'll be taking time in prayer. Uh, I'll be taking time also to encourage men. I'll be taking time to call men and speak encouragement to them. When I see this narrative, I know I cannot change the world by myself, but I know with a little, I know, or with even a phone call, with that was text of encouragement or even a call of encouragement, I know I can begin to change the narrative. But it takes us doing it together and, uh, and understanding, not only knowing about the statistics, but also acting, again, uh, uh, acting uh, being proactive and make a difference.
Another thing about imprisonment, this is so amazing. It says here that there are around 85,000 prisoners in England and Wales, 95% of whom are men. So men are more likely to be sent to prison and receive longer sentences than women for the same crimes. Fatherhood, let's see what the, uh, the statistics about fatherhood. It says in 96%, 96 of cases, the parents who are prior to court for access to their children are men. It is men who are fighting daily. They want to see their children. They want to, uh, to have time with their children. But uh, the, 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 the government and sometimes even the mothers, they are fighting. They, they, they are punishing men with the children. And listen, and I pray that if you are listening to this broadcast and you are punishing your man, maybe you are divorced and you have separ or you are separated and you are using the children as a tool. It is a criminal offense and it is so disgraceful. Don't punish the father with the children. You may have all the reason and the, everybody will sympathize with you and they'll say it is okay to punish. Listen, but remember, there's a God in heaven. Never punish a father or never br bring a divide between the father and the children or even vice versa. Never put, a, a, never do that. Our God in heaven is watching. You brought those two children together and you can have all the excuses, but never deny a mother. If you are a man, never deny a mother a chance to be with their children. Never give a negative report, a negative media, just so that you can look good. Even men can do that and also women can do that. But the statistics is telling us here that 96% of cases where the parents who apply to court for access to their children are men. I pray that if you are watching and listening to this broadcast, listen if you have your grievances with your man, put them, find them by, by yourself, uh, between two of you, but don't involve the children. Don't let your husband or your wife be among these statistics. Listen, you can do it when they are young, but time will come, they will grow up. And because there is a God in heaven, they will know the truth. The Bible said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. When they are set free by the truth, believe you me, you may have a negative legacy as opposed to good. Right now you can bribe them with toys, you can bribe them with good gifts, you can do what you, you can do. But listen, when the day they will know the truth, because God, you can lie to them right now. You can paint all manner of pictures right now. You can, you can uh, paint negative picture. Maybe against your wife or against your husband to show to the children that you are the good one. Listen, there is a God in heaven and one day they will know the truth. And Bible says the truth sets free. They will be set free from your bondage. And when they will be set free, you may grow old and see your children reject you when you are supposed to enjoy them. So this is my prayer. If you have fight again with your husband or with your wife, please let solve your di differences, but don't involve the children. Because this statistics is true. This is what it says here. A quarter of a million men in the UK and Scotland are primary carers. 92% of lone parents' households are headed by mothers. And about 1 million children in the UK are growing up without the contact with their fathers. Listen. The enemy may come package. And you may see all the reason why you should, this should happen, that the, the father will not see the children. But if you are born again Christian, and if you are professing Christian, remember the spirit behind this. The enemy is not after you. The enemy is after the boy child. And did you know what? When he, he refused, when he break marriages, when he break families, he know that he has to, he can get two in one. He can get the mother and the child together. But when the family is united, there's a big difference because the enemy knows he cannot win. This is what he talks about the domestic and sexual, sexual violence. About, he says that for every three victims of, of partner abuse, two will be female and one, one, will, be male, one will be male. Every year, uh, 450,000 men in the UK suffer from partner abuse. You know, sometimes we, men don't talk. Men are suffering silently. 
I, 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 I had thought when we were growing up, we never thought that maybe women can be abusive or women can be violent. But as the age I am in now, I have had so many cases where men have been uh, abused, men has been uh, uh, all manner of uh, violences. I'm not saying that is that men does not do that. I know I have also had uh, cases where domestic violence, women being beaten up, being abused. But also this today I want to highlight the side of men, and I'm not for uh, abuse of any form. But I want us to highlight that also men suffer this. So it says here that one in five victims of forced marriage are male. Some of this you never knew that they exist. You never knew, but it is happening. But we should know what is happening, especially with men, so that when we pray, we can pray for them. And the final one is about education and teaching stuff. In the 2018 cycle, 196,000, uh, uh, one of five men, uh, 196,000, that's about or almost uh, 200,000 men, uh, boys were domiciled in the UK. Boys uh, living in UK were accepted, uh, were accepted uh, in the university compared to 263,000 women. That means it's a gap of 67,000, a difference of 67,000. More women are joining our universities. More women are, are, are becoming more educated than men. More women are going back to school than men. You may say that men are slow. No, they are not slow, but we need to understand the system. We have more women joining university, more women in college than men. Do you think this is normal? We may say that, oh, our women are becoming enlightened, but we need to know that it has also a spiritual connotation on it. And so when we pray, we must be intentional when we pray for our boy child, when we pray for the boy child, when we pray for them, pray that God may protect them, God may shield them, God may open their eyes, God may strengthen them, God may give them long life, God may uh, 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 release upon them the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Let's pray for this because listen, you can be enlightened or you can be a mother, you can have girls, but listen, you at the end of the day, you find yourself, you are praying that you may have, your, your girls will have a good, uh, good husband. Good husband don't come from Tesco. So you will have, listen, either you rem they remain single or they will be married. So, so don't say that, oh, I'm, I have a, I'm a mother of girls. Uh, I, I don't need to know about the statistics of what is happening with men. Listen, this is a, is a common denominator. You need men for your daughters. You, so it, we cannot ignore. This is, that's why I'm saying we have to rise up and pray for the boy child because we need the boy child. Hallelujah. We need the boy child and we need to pray for them. And listen what it says here uh, about teaching. In 2018, England, uh, in England, men made up to 24.6% of the teaching workforce, down from 26.2% in 2017. And there's a breakdown. In nursery, nursery and primary, uh, there were 34,322 males and 187,730 females. That is for only 14.2 of males. In secondary school, there were 64,513 males and 116,096. That's account to 35.8% of males. Only 2% of RAEs are teachers, uh, teachers are male. So what is it telling you? Are we li living in a feminized world? Do, do we have a, do men have a, do the boy child have a place in the world that we live in right now? The boy child has a, uh, 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 has a place. But we need to begin to, to, to role model and uh, also celebrate if it, uh, the teachers who are there who are men. Let's begin celebrating them. Let's begin to encourage them because what is happening if we, the boys see that there are no men uh, who are teachers, very few of them who to, uh, choose uh, at being a teacher as a career. But we can change the narrative by beginning to appreciate those who are already there. Praise the Lord. And if you are a mother and you are raising boys, begin to teach yourself, train yourself, understand the thinking of men, how they think, how they are wired and will reduce the damage. 
will not become the tools that the enemy is using to kill and destroy the boy child, but will become a tool in the hands of God in his desire to see the boy child stand. So if as, as we come to the conclusion of today's service, this is my prayer, and I pray for every man, that man don't give up, don't throw in the towel. We are, we, are, we, are, we are praying for you, and we stand with you. And I believe with the teaching and the, and the training, as we continue to, uh, uh, to wage war against the spiritual forces that are rising up against men, I believe that we are going to raise a godly, we are going to live a godly heritage. We are going to raise godly men, even as we raise the boys. And even the men that are already there, we, have, we, we can start, a, we are starting a movement. Not that we can start, we are starting a movement whereby we are going to say, we shall not have one more, one more man down. We are standing together. We are praying together, encouraging one another, covering one another's nakedness, caring, one, caring one of one another, and standing on each, uh, for each other. And for us men, I know today I've spoken more to women and uh, how we should pray, but also men, let's not tear one another down. If I see, see some man, a man who is doing something that is positive, let's celebrate them. Don't become the terror bearer, the one who is tearing one another down. Let's become men as Bible intends men to be. Let's not become the, the gossipers who are, uh, who are uh, our duty or uh, 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 is just spectating and speaking against each other. Don't be jealous of your man when you see that like, he's doing well than you. I know men, we are, born, we are, we are very comp competitive, but it is when you begin to celebrate others that also we begin to grow as a team. Don't let the enemy use you to destroy another man's legacy. And this is my prayer, that we will raise a God-fearing generation. We will raise and we will restore the voice of a man in our community and in our nation. These statistics that I've just read here, they can be changed overnight when men begin to see things differently, when women begin to see things differently. I believe with God all things are possible. Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yes, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. And I believe the time is now. Arise, arise, let's make a difference. God let you bless you. I wish I had more time. And I believe every week or every two weeks, I'll be bringing something, some few more nuggets about manhood, about boy child, because we need to speak out. The silence is, the enemy is using our silence as a weapon and taking advantage of us. So I believe, let's rise up. If you are a man and who is, you are watching, join we are, uh, 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 call the number there uh, we are in the next seven days we are having our website up for the men and you can be able to subscribe and see some of the content that we'll be posting there the time to arise is now god it shall bless you and if you have not given your life to jesus the best way to en uh, enjoy and live a legacy and knowing that you uh, you are you have a uh, you have that assurance of long life and not only a long life but i'm sure that you have uh, you have in, when it comes to eternity you know it is sorted that god is with you and he has your back covered the best way is to give your life to jesus so god is bless you and looking forward to see you again look subscribe to our messages that we did yesterday uh, that i i preached yesterday and share this video widely let's rise up let's change the narrative together we are strong and together we stand in jesus name god bless you love you looking to see you again thank you